right. Today, we do have a quorum present. We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order at September 18th, 2023 at 6 p.m. And we have a sixth grader that's going to do the Pledge of Allegiance Yay. for us, Marek. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Along the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, and one indivisible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Paul is going to, Paul Ariaga is going to read our board mission statement. Tolosa Midway Independent School District educates every student to be a lifelong learner, a person of integrity, and a positive contributor to society. All right. The next thing on the agenda is public comment. Public comments at regular board meetings will be conducted in accordance with board policy BED. At meetings other than regular board meetings, public comments are limited to items on the posted meeting notice and agenda. At regular meetings, public comments are allowed on any topic regardless of whether the topic is an item on the agenda posted with the notice of the meeting. Comments shall be heard at the beginning of the board meeting. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker, except that non-English speakers requiring a translator are limited to six minutes. The presiding board officer may modify or waive these time limits as appropriate. Public comment shall not be used for personal attacks by the speaker against district employees or students. Speakers who engage in personal attacks are used insulting, profane, threatening, or abusive language during any board meeting shall be ruled out of order by the presiding board officer and may be escorted from the board meeting room. Any concerns or complaints regarding individual district employees, students, or parents must be resolved via the appropriate complaint process. As stated in Board Policy BED Local, pursuant to Section 551.042 of the Texas Government Code, no board member or administrator may respond to a member of the public regarding an item that is not on the agenda unless such re response is a recitation of district policy or a statement of specific factual information. Our first speaker is Drake. I would like to start with a preamble to the United States Constitution. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. I believe we the people refers to all the people, including and definitely not limited to our teachers and educators, as I believe a community is only as healthy as its school districts. The staff matters, the children matter, the community matters, the people matter. I believe it is important to treat others as you wish to be treated, with respect, dignity, and care, and I hope this board does the same. This is not an abstract ideal. Following the oldest moral rule on earth is the only way a person or a community can truly thrive, not just survive. We all need each other, not just to survive, but to thrive. It's not what we want for our children, to thrive in a world where they will be able to make a good living, and so they too can raise their own families and watch their children's children grow up in peace. We need teachers to help out all our children learn not just how to add and subtract and read, but also how to study, to create, to listen to, and maybe practice music and become creators of bridges, new farm equipment, spaceship, houses, and hospitals, and to study about different people and cultures and to appreciate and learn from, not fear our differences. The future depends on all of us working together it's not just a dream, it's a necessity. A community is only as healthy as its school districts. Actions will always speak louder than words. Please provide this district staff the 15% raise needed to ensure the whole community, all people, can grow. Best regards, very concerned citizen. Thank you, Drake. 
All right, we will now be convening in closed session. The board will convene and close meeting as authorized by the Texas Open Meetings Act to discuss items allowed by the Texas Government Code, Chapter 551.071-074.06.082.0821.083 and .084. The time is 6.05 p.m. and we are now in closed session. September 18, 2023 <coughs> at 7.06 p.m. And we have reconvened from closed session and we do have some action resulting from closed session deliberation. Madam President, members of the board, it's the administrator's recommendation that you accept the resignations of the employees as presented. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second by Ben and a second by Paul Mastella. All those in favor? None opposed. Motion carries 6-0. Madam President, it is, it is the administration's recommendation that you accept the two educator contracts as presented. We have a motion. Paul Second. All those in favor? None mm -hmm. opposed. Motion carries 6 0. And Madam President, uh, based on discussion among the Board of Trustees, it is recommended that the board operating procedures that have was discussed be amended as presented. I'll make a motion. Have a motion. Paul Mastella, do I have a second? I'll second again. second. All those in favor? None opposed. Motion carries 6 0. All right. Next item on the agenda is um, presentation of the HQIM program. Dr. White? Mr. Benjamin, Madam President, members of the board, we're really excited tonight because we have a, a really important update to share with everybody regarding HQIM. Um, that is uh, the, one of the biggest uh, initiatives that the district is currently undertaking. Um, it's a multi-year kind of project that we're really kind of still making our way through the initial phases of uh, the rollout for HQIM. And so we have our curriculum and instruction department here to kind of walk us through uh, the current school year's updates. So with that being said, Dr. Chong. Hey, and I'll be your Vanna. Yes. <laughs> I love okay. it. Thank you, first of all, for this opportunity to present to you guys. Uh, last year, we presented, you know, we had like a plan of action that we were going to initiate a post and review audit. And so we went through that phase. And so today, we're here to kind of give you an update of where we're at, where we're at, where we are, and where we're going. Okay? But before I do that, I'd like to introduce our instructional facilitators. They will also be assisting us today in this presentation. So I'm going to start off with our primary instructional facilitators. We have Shelby Moran, and she is our math instructional facilitator. We have Angela Hess, and she is our ELA instructional facilitator. And then at the intermediate, we have Naomi Davis-Gonzalez. She's our ELA facilitator. We have Melinda Carrasco. She's our math instructional facilitator. And then at the middle school, we have Annalisa, and she's been a trooper. She is our math instructional facilitator, but she's also been working with the ELA, um, you know, mm -hmm. as well. Happy so that's a lot. So, you know, kudos to her. But um, we're going to start off, kick it off. For you guys and then we're going to pass the baton to each of the instructional facilitators they're the ones actually on the campuses working daily with our teachers um, on hqim and so kudos to them because they have been like i mean instrumental in uh, the implementation and the rollout mm -hmm. of hqim and so um thank you guys because you guys are doing such an awesome job um, so we will present. So today with HQIM, just to kind of give you an update of what this presentation is about tonight, we're going to talk about briefly about the rollout timeline. Um, we're going to talk about some of our campus <coughs> pros, grows, 
And this is coming from teacher, teacher feedback. You know, that's what we really want to hear about. How is this really going on our campuses? And so that's the part that our instructional facilitators will be sharing with you. Um, and then, you know, here at CNI, we also have some district glows and grows that we want to share with you. And then we also want to talk about our communication tools. What are we doing to, you know, to promote HQIM and, you know, share with the community, teachers and parents, you, you as well, uh, what we're doing to communicate um, HQIM. And then from here on, what are our next steps? Okay, so I'm going to briefly go to the next slide. Um, this is the rollout timeline. Um, like I said, last year we were here in front of you guys and we were talking about this initiative of, you know, doing a curriculum review audit, we started that out with the primary and the intermediate. And so we went through a couple of meetings. And, you know, the great thing about this um, curriculum review audit, it was, it was based on teacher input. So we had our core committee of teachers, admin, and so it was a collaborative effort. It was not, you know, a top-down um, initiative, it was actually we had input from our teachers. And so I can say wholeheartedly this is this is what the teachers wanted. They had an opportunity to to voice their opinion. We conducted surveys and the majority, you know, we're not gonna make everyone happy, but I will say the majority of our teachers that participated in this curriculum review audit wanted to go in this direction. So um, so we we started you know initiating the plan to roll out HQIM and then we had this wonderful opportunity come our way with the Education Service Center because they found out, hey, you know, uh, TM is going to implement HQIM. Um, we have this grant. Um, it's called Texas Lesson Study. And this grant, it's, it's over $200,000. And it's a two-year commitment. But what they're doing is that they're sending their ESC consultants, and I don't want to get too much into it because we're going to talk about it, but they come weekly and they meet with our teachers and they help them with, you know, the planning, um, you know, the internalizations of the lessons. So they're, they're instrumental, I believe, in helping making this HQIM a success. And so I'm going to kind of leave that. So I don't want to steal their thunder, but I'm going to leave that up to them uh, to share with you guys. And then, um, so we had all, you know, you know, primary, um, intermediate going on with HQIM, and then we had Melanie's campus, you know, saying, hey, you know, we want to do the curriculum review audit. So in the second semester of last year in the spring, we did the same thing with middle school. Again, we went through the same process. You know, we had our core committee, and then from the core committee, we went out to all the teachers, and it was the same process. Middle school. Again, we gave the survey to the teachers, and at the end, they wanted to also go in this direction with HQIM. So then we also brought in Texas Lesson Study for them as well. So that is a two-year um, contract with them. But the great thing about this is we have K-8 alignment. And so for the first time, you know, and we'll talk about this, but when you're going into the classrooms and you're conducting those walkthroughs, you know, you see, you know, it's not that they're on the same page, but the content is the same. The high quality instruction is there. The rigor is there. The level of questioning, the higher level questioning is there. And so you're not comparing apples to oranges anymore in different classrooms. We're doing the same thing, but teachers are adding their own spin. And so they're going to talk more about that as well. Um, and then, sorry, can you go back? Sorry, sorry, sorry. And so over the summer, or at, say starting in May, we put in the rush to get in this material because once we knew we were going in this direction, it was very important that we made sure that we had the materials in teachers' hands before they actually started the school year. And I will say we're very lucky because, you know, just talking with other, you know, districts and representatives to get the materials in, they said, hey, you know, maybe October you'll actually have TEs and student materials in their hands. But let me tell you, we were very blessed. We got, we got those materials in, and I'm telling you, these ladies over here, I mean, in Canada. equity for sure. Yes. <laughs> we got it in, like, I think that weekend right before school started. And so we were in there, you know, unpacking those books, you know, uh, you know and just trying to get in some pictures just so you believe us. Yes, because it's <laughs> definitely a teamwork. I mean, definitely teamwork here. And so we were able to get the materials for the teachers in their hands. Uh, but I want to also preface that they also had access to the digital 
um, online components um, Amplify, Eureka, and Carnegie as of last year. So this was actually just getting the, the hard copies, the print materials in our hands. And so today with those three arrows, this is where we're at right now. We are actually in the implementation. Our teachers have the materials. There's still some materials that we still need to um, receive. You know, there's a couple of uh, shortages in some of the classes, but we're, we're taking care of that. We're making um, print copies for right now, but they do have digital access to everything that um, you would have in hard materials. And every teacher has their hard copy TE. Yes. And so I'm going to talk today, we're going to talk about the um, implementation with support systems. So, which like I said, our instructional facilitators are a huge part of, you know, the success and of course the support of the admin. Um, and then of course, Texas lesson study. And then we have a lot of support for these teachers because I mean, I still have not forgotten what it is to be in the classroom. You know, I always, we always make decisions based on, you know, if we were a teacher, you know, adding one more thing on their plate. So we always have that factor in mind. And so you don't want to just roll out, you know, a new program and just give them one day of training and then, hey, good luck. You know, we wish you well. So our, our thought process was this, is that we want to be continuously providing that support. And so one of the ways or many of the ways that we're doing that is, like I said, with Texas Lesson Study. Um, Kelly Harmon, um, Trinity Elite at the primary, so they're, we're all working together to really provide that uh, support for teachers. Is it hard? Yes. Is it taking them out of their comfort level with this new curriculum? Absolutely. And just networking with other districts and talking to them about, you know, hey, how did it go when you guys were initially implementing, you know, Amplify, Eureka, Carnegie? The struggle's there, you know? It's just like the kids, we want that productive struggle. It's kind of the same way for, for teachers. And even, I will say, with us, you know, they're having to learn the curriculum. They're having to become the experts so that they can continue that, that support and sustain the program as we move forward. Um, and so, and then, of course, the campus visits, you know, admin, they're, they're in the classrooms, you know, you know, it's an I gotcha, you know, we're just in there, you know, just kind of doing those little snapshots. And so we're also in there. Instructional facilitators are also in there. So, you know, we're, we really want to provide that support for our teachers and make sure. I'm hoping that next year they'll say, you know what, it's getting easier. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pass it over to Shelby. And she's going to share um, some of her glows and grows from her, from her campus. Okay. All right, so I'm Shelby Moran. I'm at the primary as the math IF. Um, and overall, um, I think our teachers like Eureka. It's definitely a challenge. It's a challenging program. There's a lot of components. It's a lot of uh, prep and all of that. But overall, um, the teachers seem to like it, and it's getting better, kind of like Dr. Sham uh, said. So um, in the walkthroughs that I am doing, and I think that our admin is doing as well, um, we can see that the teachers are following the lesson plans and following through with Eureka to the best of their abilities. They're really trying. They're really like giving it their all. Um, they're spending a lot of time prepping, and they're doing it in the classroom. So it's, um, you know, most of them, not, not most of them, all of them are really trying with fidelity to do, uh, do the Eureka lessons. Um, the kids are getting the hang of it, so the kids are getting better with the program, as the teachers are, and the kids also seem to like it. Um, several of the teachers have mentioned that the kids really like it. Um, I went into a classroom and modeled a lesson, and whenever I got finished, I was about to leave, and one of the kids was like, oh, I really like math now. And so, um, and a couple of the other teachers have said that, uh, that they've had like similar situations. So uh, the kids like it, uh, which is really good. Um, and then uh, we have manipulative kits that go with our Eureka. So it's everything, all of the manipulatives that are required for our lessons are in those kits, with the exception of some like consumables or like off the wall things. Like one of the lessons in kinder requires socks. Those aren't in the kit, but <laughs> those are, you know, bring from home. Uh, but for the most part, everything's in there. So um, all the teachers are very appreciative of that. Um, like I said, it's not without its challenges. Uh, the first challenge, the biggest challenge that we have is the time it takes. Um, the first one is the pacing. 
time in, I guess, two different components. The pacing. Uh, the pacing of Eureka is fast. It's a new lesson every day. It's not like you can kind of break it up and do, you know, half today and half tomorrow. Um, you, you, ca you have to keep up. And I know that has been a big stressor for some of the teachers, especially if they have to be out, if they're sick. Um, it's like, oh, I'm behind a day. You know, what am I going to do? So I try to work with them, and they work together on, you know, combining lessons if they get behind. And it's also just a lot to squeeze into one day. So the Eureka lesson is set out to last 60 minutes, but especially in the beginning when we were getting used to it, it was very hard to squeeze everything in. So that was a really big challenge. Um, and the other component of that time struggle is the time that it takes the teachers to prep. Um, and this just comes from, you know, them not being familiar with the program and having to learn it themselves. So, and that is getting better for a lot of people. I know that there are some who are definitely still struggling a lot with the time it takes to prep and some have gotten a lot quicker at it. So it's one of those things that'll get better as it goes. Um, especially in kinder and first, but really especially in kinder, there are a lot of materials that have to be prepped for each lesson. So we have those manipulative kits and they're manipulative kits, excuse me, and they're awesome, but there are a lot of things they have to like pull out every day. Um, if you look in their, some of their lessons, sometimes the materials list is like half the page. It's a lot of material. So on top of the teacher prep time, they're still, you know, grappling with that. Um, we've gotten bags for them for student manipulative kits and um I've made like lists for each lesson so they can just quickly look at it um, and get those, but that is one of the, the struggles there. And then the last um, little struggle that we have is the uh, foundational skills that are missing. And I think the intermediate probably has the same problem um, and maybe even the middle school with, um, like we're just starting, like especially like the second graders, they're starting and they've never had Eureka before. And Eureka teaches, the lessons teach in a very specific way using very specific methods. And they've never heard of a number bond before. And the number bonds, whenever you, they start in second grade, they're expected to know what a number bond is, which they would because the kindergarten Eureka is already using number bonds this early in the year. But they've never heard of that. So the teachers have to go back and do some background knowledge um, teaching and stuff like that. And so that's kind of a struggle for those second graders. But I just keep reminding everyone, next year it'll be better. And then in two years, they'll be pros because they've had it since kinder. So, um, but yeah, those are our glows and grows. And I think there's some pictures, right? Yeah. Um, so this is just a kindergarten student. Um, like I said, we have those manipulative kits and the kinder stuff especially is very hands-on and very manipulative heavy. So they have to, and they start slow in kinder, which I really like in the beginning. So this is, uh, they were just drawing four, uh, a picture of four things and a picture of five things. So that's that one. And then, um, so this is in first grade and these kids were solving an addition problem using those number bonds I mentioned. And you'll see on the next one, that they also are using number bonds here. So that's kind of like that continuity that they were talking about, that alignment, um, it, you know, and the struggle of they didn't know what that was. But um, they're getting the hang of it. They like the number bond. Um, so this is second graders doing uh, a subtraction problem with these specific strategies. Like I said, they use like a, it's called a take 10 strategy. So very specific, but I think that's it for primary, right? I, yes. I have a couple of questions. Oh. Uh, how are we incorporating or are we incorporating ST math? Yes. So ST math we use, um, especially during stations. Um, it, a lot of the teachers use it as a station. Um, some and then also during uh, like win time, whenever the other kids are having interventions, they'll be on ST math for part of that. Um, and then, so Eureka itself is a 60 minute lesson and each of the grade levels has between 20, 20 and 30 minutes extra for like a guided math stations time. And uh, the ST math is used during that time and then again, like I said, during the win intervention time. Okay. And then it's, what, what is that? It's an enrichment program that's oh, okay. highly recommended yeah. by the And I see the very hard problem, problem, problem solving yes. driven, but without any words. So everything you have to look at the picture, <clears throat> analyze what's happening in the in the graphic, and then try to solve the problem. And then it progresses them to using numbers and words that match those numbers. So they conceptually they get it first in a really fun way. And we're also it, at, it, at the primary you? and the intermediate, we're using it. That's a non-negotiable. Every kid is on And at the middle math. school. And at the middle yeah. school. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, know, it's all the way up, yeah. yeah. And Ms. Hess, um, are we using a mirror? Yes, sir, we are. We're using a mirror. They have to go on 30 minutes a week. So they just finished their beginning of the year. The teachers are running the reports. They're using it. 
So, yes. And intermediate as well? Yes, yes sir. Mm -hmm. And then one last question. Uh, you talk about the um, enormous amount of materials. Uh, um, principles. Are we looking at any type of uh, instructional uh, para for teacher support with that? Or, or are we depending on the teachers to do all of that? We're depending on the teachers to do all of that. So it is a lot of work. At middle school, we do give our tested subjects um, at least one period to plan and to meet with Annalisa because it is a lot of work mm -hmm. to gather all the materials. Mm -hmm. And we haven't discussed it. What we did was purchased bags for um, the teachers to be able to build their manipulative kits so that way they would know the kids had what the students need so they could just grab. Um, but we are in the process. But I have to brag on these ladies because they will get in there and they'll say, just bring it to me and I'll do it for you. So they've been instrumental in the rollout of this. So I couldn't be more thankful. Mm -hmm. That's all the questions. Thank you. Okay. Good job. And then I'm going to pass it over. I have a question. Oh, I'm yes, sorry. yes, I'm sorry. Because... <laughs> Uh, HQIM, I, I don't understand what it really is, right? Uh -huh. So, but is that a, a whole day curriculum? Is that, I mean, every, or is these, or is this? It depends on the content. So, at primary, they, when we did those um, uh, uh, curriculum audits, uh -huh. they elected not to go with the reading part of HQIM because we were adopting a new phonics program. So, um, so they are only doing math HQIM, and on all the camp on, these on, on primary mm -hmm. campus. On oh, primary mm -hmm. campus. And the Eureka is a six year. So the math uh, amount of time for math for each grade level is um, in kinder it's eighty minutes, in first grade it's eighty five minutes, and in second grade it's ninety minutes. And the Eureka uh, program is a sixty minute lesson for each grade level. So they have either twenty, twenty five, or third. Uh, is that right? Yeah, 20, 25, or 30 minutes left over for math stations, which is where the kids get to do practice and like practice activities, and the teachers can pull them. But this is like our main meat of the math lesson. But all students. Yes. All yes. students. Mm -hmm. All students. Okay, so how, how, for tier one instruction. Yes. yes. Okay. So the special education. Yes, students. they get tier one instruction. Yes. They yes. get the yes. same. Yes. All children. Yes. Mm -hmm receives tier one instruction and then there's differentiation based on their cognitive abilities. Right. Yes. So it's being modified. And, and Eureka in and of itself has some abilities to differentiate for teachers. Uh, for example, there's a math fluency check. They call them um, sprints. sprints. Mm -hmm. And so like the first 10 of the sprint are easier. The last six to 10 of the sprint are more cognitively challenging. And so I may say to you, to me, who's math challenge, hey, you're going to do 1 through 10. Hey, guys, over here, you're my GT students. Mm -hmm. Skip 1, 10, because we know you have that, and you're going to do uh, 10 through 20. So they're all moving at the level that, that they, they should be level. moving. Right, yes. Right. There's so, also, like, notes in the, each lesson on, like, how you can di differentiate mm -hmm. for, um, you can, they have notes on how you can, you know, up at a level for your higher students, how you can, uh, you know, scaffold and help for your lower students. And then there's also stuff for like ESL uh, students who are, um, you know, mm -hmm. ELs or, and things like Our that. Our dual right? language program is using the same curriculum, yes. the same math curriculum. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? I do. Do you have redirection for those students? I know you said you have. they have an opportunity to, um, uh, not to relearn, but to catch on. Mm -hmm. So do you have a, a, a relearn? Um, like a reteach? Reteach, yes. That would be the opportunity when they go into their small group. Mm -hmm. That would be an opportunity that the teacher, you know, based on, you know, checking for understanding, doing those lap checks, if she notices that, you know, Jesse, Cindy, and Lisa, and Jackie are not getting it, while the kids are doing independent or while they're going to the independent stations, she can pull that small okay. group. Okay, good. And, and they also and have interventions. Right, okay. yes. They have interven interventions yes. built in. Mm -hmm. They also have exit tickets and mm -hmm. uh, problems of practice that mm -hmm. start the class period. So you can assign that problems of practice, discuss it with your kids, mm -hmm. and as you're doing that, pick up on who's not getting the problem mm -hmm. of practice okay. and pull those during your, during your small, small group instruction. instruction. Mm -hmm. instruction. I'm amazed at what y'all can do in 16 minutes. That's all I can say. <laughs> if not without its challenges. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
So I'm going to have um, the intermediate talk about their glows and grows. I'm Naomi Davis Gonzalez. Um, just like Shelby said, just like Dr. Sean said, this has not been without its discomfort. And, you know, teachers who've been teaching 10, 15 years, well, this is the way I always teach cause and effect. Well, we're not doing that anymore. We have to, you know, it's a, it's a mind shift. We're using, a, you know, everybody's using the same curriculum. Um, and it's, it's hard to, to deviate from what you know and what you're comfortable with. So it has been really challenging. I also want to say, I know um, I was reading our grows, but I was reading them and I was seeing who, who, the teachers, who the teachers were that wrote them. And I thought this was, I feel like this was like about three weeks ago uh -huh. that we asked for this. And I wonder if Yes. These same teachers, we'd ask them again, like, if they still feel like this, because we're more into the curriculum. We are more comfortable now. We are, um, we're seeing the, the change in teachers, and we're seeing that they're willing to, you know, they're kind of diving into it now. There was a lot of pushback at the beginning, but we see the teachers growing. We see them more comfortable. So that's, that's very, very encouraging. Some of our glows is that the uh, interesting topic material. So our fifth graders did a unit on the Renaissance. So they absolutely loved it. They were going home and Googling things on their own about the Renaissance and pictures and statues and paintings about the Renaissance because the, um, the, reading, the, the readings that they have are just, they're very, very interesting. Um, unit two was in fourth grade. They loved it because it was set up like a game show. So the teacher was the host of the game show and the kids were like the participants. They had, we had teachers that set up makeshift cameras and the kids had to go and talk to the camera. But it was, it was all done. Um, it was all done for personal narratives. It was, they loved it for fourth grade. Um, the they love the fact that we get our Texas Lesson Study Coach, which is Dr. Sean talked about, ESC2 that comes. They come every single week to work with our teachers every week in small group sessions during their planning time. So all of our Wednesdays are taken up at the intermediate all day long. We meet with teachers all day long so that we can talk through lessons. We can look at assessments, whatever the, the group at that time, whatever their need is, that's what we target. That's what we do to whatever we can do to help the teachers so that they can better implement what's happening in the next few days in their lessons. Uh, so they love that they're there every week for us. Um, another teacher says it's going well. She thinks the, the kids learn a lot from the curriculum. It promotes collaboration, lots of collaboration, lots of group work. The rigor is visible and very high. Absolutely very, very high rigor. Um, absolutely very high. Uh, it's engaging and it prepares students for constructive responses with embedded writing activities. There is a lot of writing, a lot of writing in this curriculum, more writing than we've ever seen before. The students, I mean, day one are already expected to, it's just a lot of writing that they do in the curriculum. Uh, some of the growth, some of the things that the teachers are a little apprehensive about is that, again, because there's so much writing, they expect the students to right away out of the gate, start writing, and the teachers feel like, well, we haven't taught all of the pieces, all of the aspects of writing. Um, but it, you know, it's coming, it, it's coming. We're like, you don't have to teach it, just get them writing, just get them writing. That's what, uh, uh, Texas Lesson Study keeps telling us, just get them writing. You'll The pieces of the, the teaching and the kids learning, it'll come. Just get them writing. Uh, it takes a long time to prepare because it's so new. Uh, absolutely. It's taking a long time because it's, it, is, it is new. And so the teachers, in a sense, have to learn a new curriculum before they can teach it. Uh, the slides, they are not provided for teachers. The, it lacks teaching foundational skills because it's such a quick pace and the rigor is so high, the kids have no background knowledge. They don't have, they've never done this before. Again, we're like, just wait till next year. Just wait till in two years. Once we see the, the kids coming up after the, a couple of years of this curriculum, we're really excited to see what the kids can do and how different it, they're gonna feel about the rigor and the pace. Um, Again, it needs, they, they said uh, they need more instruction for grammar. Again, because the teachers are like, we haven't taught writing, and they're asking them to write essays already. Well, and again, um, <laughs> we're telling them, just hold on. It's there. It's coming. We've only, this was a couple weeks ago. I'm like, we've only been in school one grading period. The, the lessons are coming. Just be patient. Um, the other thing is they're a little apprehensive right now. We're teaching three lessons a week because they're so quick uh, and so long, 
we're instead of teaching five lessons, we've gone to teaching three lessons a week. Not that we don't teach reading every day. We teach reading every day. We're just teaching three lessons a week because it is so much packed material. It's so it's so long, um, especially like in third grade. We have 120 minutes to teach reading. And the Amplify lesson is 120 minutes. They have no room for any kind of, they have no wiggle room. So it's hard for them to get all of that in five lessons a week. So we've vamped it down to three. In fourth and fifth grade, it's a little different because they have 120 minutes to, for their block and their, their lessons are 90 minutes. So they do have a little more leeway uh, to do you know, to, to take their time if they needed to with the lesson because right now they're just finding that the lessons are taking longer than the time allotted because it's so new. So real quick, um, this is all great. My, I say this a lot. And so what are we doing to address concerns of teachers, right? I hear everybody say they're picking it up, they're doing more, they're working harder. That's good, mm -hmm. and that's very much appreciated. But is there... At what point do we have a milestone where we're going to go back and look at, I mean, we got a lot of glows and grows, but I'm sure there's some no's in there too, right? <laughs> so or is there a team that's going to do like a cold eye review of, you know, not the same team that built the program, but somebody else that's going to say, hey, wait a minute, they're talking about this, and you have an answer for it because you built the program, or you, you know, you got it going. But maybe I would suggest that at some point we do some kind of milestone to go back and say, are we on track? Because if we lose the foundation, if we lose the, the, the belief in the foundation, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it hard for everybody, right, including the students. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we always think about that, that we're, we're not just blowing and going. we got to think, what are, the, what, are the, what, what are the hurdles? What are the things we're dealing with that we have great people in our district mm -hmm. that are just jumping hurdles every day? But, he, you know, he alluded to, are we thinking about paras? Are we thinking about good things going from five to three? But are there other things that we can do to help our teachers so that they're not so, you know, and I will stressed? Say, and if I can interject that, one of the things, um, like I said, we lessened, the, you know, from three to five. And the great thing about, you know, the math and even the reading, a lot of these standards are recursive. It's not, you know, we teach it for six weeks. You have to master it. They're going to see it again. Particularly so, in reading. Yeah, so that's why we said, you know, just trust the process. You know, they're going to see it again because it's recursive. Yeah. Um, I also do want to say, state that, you know, this is kind of like separate, but just to kind of how we're trying to alleviate so the teachers can really focus on the curriculum, um, MTSS, RTI. You know, last year, teachers were having to do all that. You know, they were having to keep track the monitoring, that's a lot of work, especially paperwork, when, even. paperwork, when you have a lot of kids, you know, in your classroom that could possibly be, you know, in that pathway for tier two. So what these, uh, the campuses have done with our reading interventionists and our math intervention, they've taken on that responsibility. So there's, do the teachers still have to, you know, be mindful and have those kids, you know, on their watch list and still do that, you know, small group instruction, absolutely, but our interventionists are are kind of alleviating that 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 extra work and really focusing on those tier two students so that our teachers can focus on tier one and because that's what we want them to do. We just it's new. Like we said, we understand that it's it's a hard so that's all we want them to do is just really focus on tier two. And like I said, in addition to the Wednesday support, you know, we they that's really what their focus is this year, our instructional facilitators is to be there to support our teachers in any capacity that they, they need them in. Good. Because I just want to make sure that the yes. concerns get bubbled to the top, we right? Do. The top yes. needs to know that there's and concerns. Know, like, Dr. Sham and I have both had individual conferences with multiple teachers, mm -hmm. teachers that are stressed out, teachers mm -hmm. that have been to campus administration, mm -hmm. have gone through the proper channels of, hey, please hear me, and they will refer yeah. them to us. Yeah. Kenna, right. Sham, can you sit with them? Can you, you know, talk about the why? Can you work yeah. with them? And so I know we both yeah. have been on on our campuses mm -hmm. really working with teachers. Mm -hmm. We've been at the PLCs now. I haven't for the last two weeks. So I don't know. <laughs> um, but we, we're sitting in those, those Wednesday meetings mm -hmm. too, so we're hearing what they're being asked to do, and we're supporting that mm -hmm. as well. Um, I'd also like to say that, 
don't think that just because we went from three to five, yeah. we're not covering no. standards. We did, we alleviated those two lessons per week with the support of the mm -hmm. service center who does know the curriculum inside and out and does know what pattern they'll, it'll come back to. And, and so they've created some documents that will show teachers. It's okay if they're not at mastery with grammar and writing right now because look right here and right here you're going to talk about it again. So they, they've been able to alleviate some of that stress too just with the documents that they create and share. So those are some of the things that are happening that, that we feel like we're, we're trying to be as supportive as, as we can. I will be brutally honest because that's just who I am. There are some teachers who are just – sticking their feet in the sand and saying, I'm on my 30th year. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not messing with my cheese. Mm -hmm. um, but even those teachers are coming around too. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are working with them. They are seeing the light when their friends are saying, oh my gosh, my kids can do this. What in the world? You know, um, so I, I think that it is moving, um, but I think yeah. we're their support too, but we will, we're also working with teachers individually. So. And that was one of the, the things. There, the lessons were too fast. So, like I said, we moved it from three to five. So we're, we're hearing our teachers, we're listening to them, and so that was one way that we, we kind of compromised with them. So we're, we're listening to our teachers. We Good. Yeah, I just want to see how that worked. Yeah, I, I, that was one of great. the compromises because, like I said, it's a lesson a day, and so we said, okay, how about three lessons until... You know, and we're gonna we're revisiting this every six weeks. Okay, what's your comfort level now? Do you think maybe we can add another lesson? So those are the kind of conversations that we're having on campuses with with mixed groups. Yes, right? mm -hmm. okay. yes. Absolutely. So are we talking to to students also? Because I'm gonna go a little bit further with what you said. Um, the stress level for the teachers is there with this new program. The level for the kids is there also because I'm seeing it on every campus and hearing it um, from parents. So are we talking to kids too? Because what, what I'm seeing is that the fundamentals that some of the older kids have received growing up are now all being changed so the children can come up with the right answer, but they're being told, no, that's not the right answer because you didn't do the work the way Carnegie or the way the, one of these programs wants it done because that's the way they learned how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I know there's a struggle with learning the concepts that Carnegie or whoever is using so I just want to reiterate, too, we've got to make sure that our yeah. students are not being completely stressed out, too, um, because, you know, it all kind of domino effects. Yes. And there is definitely a level of stress. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it is a very rigorous. Mm -hmm. um, I know. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is challenging. Yes. I, I think yes. most of us have children that yes. are yes. on the struggle mm -hmm. bus with it a little bit. But I will tell you, I would rather them struggle here and land here then struggle here and land here. Oh, I'm not and saying struggle is a bad bad yeah. thing at all. And I think that's where that's, that's where we're struggle. pushing that mm -hmm. that boundary mm -hmm. is we're starting higher. So even if they're not getting all the way here, they're still landing. They're gonna get here. It. Yeah. When was the last time curriculum was changed here at TM? Probably Teeks Resource. Yeah. Or, yes. I don't know if um, probably that. I don't right. know if TMU Cisco. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would the say, middle school. I would say C school was the yeah. last time. And when was that? Oh, God. 15. Oh, I was still in the classroom. 15, 20 years ago. It's been a while. It's been a while. Okay. It's a while. Oh. Just to let you know. It's yeah. so, yeah. Far, so far back, none of us can remember. Okay, that, that says a lot right there. That's six. Yes. Okay. 2004. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering. Yeah. Long time ago. Yes. Okay. Yes. I didn't mean to interrupt you. We just. Well, this, because I I understand a little bit about it, but will this get us back, our students, once they graduate, back to the old TM where yes. we were the yes. academic yes. cream of the crop, man? I mean, yes. that's why I moved to this district, because yeah. of the academic yeah. standards that yeah. TM had. and uh, We now have an aligned yes. curriculum up to eighth grade. Well, the alignment is what will make them successful. Yes. When I think the consistency, too. Yes. Because you you can change from this classroom to this classroom to this classroom, and, and it doesn't matter who you are yeah. or who you're with. Yeah. You are getting this high standard so yeah. quality, quality instructional, instructional material. There's, Mr. Benavides, as I saw it, there were two things, two really important things that weren't in alignment with the quality of our students 
and the quality of our staff. One was curriculum and the other one was facilities. We've addressed, are in the process of addressing the curriculum and in November we'll address the facilities. I'm sorry. So that was that was the reading curriculum at the intermediate. So intermediate and middle school both chose to do reading and math at the same time because they're departmentalized. Yes. Primaries in a different vote because those teachers would have had to learn not just two mm -hmm. but three new curriculums because of the phonics and they're self-contained. So, and they're self-contained. Self so those teachers would have been responsible yes. for three brand new curriculums. Yeah. I think so. that would have had an exodus. Yes. <laughs> that would have been better. Yeah, we don't want that one. Pass it over to Melinda. <laughs> I'm uh, Melinda Carrasco. I'm the if at the intermediate for Eureka Math. Um, so a lot of the things that I heard Shelby touching on at the primary. Um, kind of mirrored um, the glows and grows that we also have at the intermediate. Um, a lot of the, one of the grows, uh, glows that I hear the teachers talk about is our pacing guide that was created for them at the beginning of the year. So they are, um, they have a clear pathway of the um, lessons and the modules that they're in. Um, so they know like what lesson they're teaching every day. They know when an assessment is coming up and they're able to prepare for that. So they do have a clear pacing guide um, what they're teaching every day. And we go through that every week at Texas uh, Lesson Study. So we, we focus on what lesson they're learning that week. And if they have any questions, uh, concerns about that week's lesson, we, we address it right there and then. Um, they... Um, are learning the academic vocabulary. They have um, opportunity for deeper rigor in the lessons. Um, the, lesson, the lesson guide, again, they're talking about the pacing guide is clear and concise. And again, we also have the manipulative kits that were given to them. So they have all the materials that are provided and there's no need to supplement. Again, there's little things like one of the lessons needed like beans, that's little things that little things that they could um, that's not provided in the kit that they would need for their lessons, and then some of the grows, um, and again this was created like three weeks ago. So I think if you were to ask these teachers um, if they have the same grows, I think they would be different uh, because they are seeing that there is differentiation in the lessons. There's, um, like Shelby was talking about, there's little notes on the side that tell you what you can do to differentiate your lesson for the students and um, scaffold it to where the students are going to have a better understanding. Um, another one of the grows is that the lessons are taking longer. Um, so they do have their block to teach the lesson, but it's, um, they're, they're finding that they're not having enough time to do the, um, the fluency, the application, the problem set, um, so we've addressed that in our PLCs and talked to them about how they can shorten, you know, some of the applications or shorten the problem set, maybe do one or two instead of all eight, and really focus on the concept development of the lesson, which is their meat of the lesson. Um, some of the teachers talked about how they have to teach one lesson a day. It is fast-paced. So what do they do when there's a student that hasn't demonstrated mastery? So one of the things that we did um, talk to them about was when they have completed the lesson, again, put them in that small group setting so that you can use that opportunity to reteach the lessons. Um, and then they talked about some things like the workbooks, needing more color. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's about, that, that was, that was it. This was what I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Any questions? I was, yes, I was just going to uh, focus on what I had asked prior about moving on when students haven't d uh, demonstrated mastery. How long do you um, allow for, for that mastery to occur or even getting to a, to a growth uh, where you can see growth that uh, they are actually catching on or learn, learning the material. How long do you, how much time do you allow for that, for the teacher to, right. to reach? I think as a teacher, if you're not seeing that mastery in a student is when you would start to think about, okay, this student might need tier two intervention. And that's when you would, the teacher would put that student like on an MTSS plan so that they could really create interventions that would help that student demonstrate mastery.
Oh, yeah. So these are just some uh, pictures that uh, for Amplify, they were uh, reviewing vocabulary. There is a lot of vocabulary, very high rigor vocabulary, words that I had look at it because I, I do my internalization too. Like, you know, my son's here. That's not why I brought him. So he can vouch for me that I really do it because <laughs> I'm there doing my homework too. But some of these words, I'm like, what is that word? I have to look them up. I mean, very, very rich, high vocabulary. So uh, in this lesson here, the third graders are there with their teacher reviewing the vocabulary for a unit that's coming up. And then for Eureka Math, these third grade students were working on applying distributive pro properties. So they were using number bonds. And like I said, I know Shelby talked about number bonds being used in kinder, first and second. So it does go into third grade as well. So that, again, they have that foundational skill when they're coming from second, you know, or the primary to apply it in third grade as well. So y'all are changing their text messaging skills. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, here's another one. This is fourth grade. They're working on personal narratives. Again, it is a lot of writing. Um, and that's uh, the personal narratives. This is actually unit one. So they should have started with unit one um, and right out of the gate. It's writing personal narratives. So this, uh, we started with unit two, then we went back to unit one because like Dr. Shop said, we weren't expecting to get our materials until October mm -hmm. and unit one did not have a um, digital component. So we didn't want to start with something we didn't have the digital component to. So we, that's why we started with unit two. But I mean, you know, thankfully we did get our materials on time. So all we did, we kept going with unit two and then we started and then we went back to unit one. So um, personal narratives is what they're working on in fourth grade. And then here, uh, this fourth grade group was working on area and perimeter. And one thing you'll see is they always have their, their learn books open. Um, and if you were walking around, you would see that they were, they're doing the read, write, draw strategy. So they were, um, they were all using either whiteboards or they were drawing in their, um, in their consumables. And then fifth grade also working on personal narratives. So all of unit one for third, fourth, and fifth was all, pers they were all doing personal narratives. So again, you can see that alignment across grade levels. Uh, they're working on that and also creating strong verbs is what they call them uh, and strong adjectives. So the students are learning to like take what they write and then edit it and make it better. Like, you know, don't to use better verbs, better adjectives to make you know, better sentences is what they're working on uh, in their personal narratives. And this fifth grade group was doing a review for their end of module assessment. And so they were working together in small groups and then they would, um, they would complete the, um, the little assessment that the, the practice review that the teacher had given them and then they would turn and talk and they would um, discuss it with each other to see who got the, you know, correct answers. If there was a misconception, they were talking, talking it through, through peer review. Thank you, guys. Okay, and I'm going to pass it over to Annalisa. Good evening, everyone. My name's Annalisa Wood. I'm at the middle school. I'm working with both math and reading teachers, as well as our science and social studies for eighth grade. But um, we're focusing on Carnegie right now. So Carnegie is our six through eight math um, curriculum. Some of the glows that we've seen, um, because we are switching from Teeks Resource, first of all, when we had that, it didn't provide lessons, it didn't provide the resource, so our teachers were still having to find that stuff. So now having um, this curriculum is very well thought out. It provides all of the background behind it, why we're doing it this way. Um, so it's a good thing. Um, the lessons have a lot of repetition in them as well as extensions. So we have the ability to repeat what's going on for the students that need the assistance, but also extend for our, our population that needs to be um, having some enrichment opportunities. Um, I will say that the assignments and the assessments are very aligned to our STAR 2.0. So I'm not sure how familiar you are with those but the type of questions that are being exposed to our students at the star on star now um, involve a lot of other things like inline choices where they have to like drag and drop the, uh, drop down from the menu um, text entry where they actually have to physically type in um, a paragraph uh, and explain their answers they have to um, put in an equation so it's uh, graphing points on a line so it's very different than just a multiple choice test 
Um, and Carnegie has that embedded in their lessons and in their tests. Um, and it's much more student driven. It, it allows for the students to have um, the opportunity to communicate with each other. If you go into any of our math classrooms, you're gonna see that they're in pairs, in groups. Um, they're supposed to be having student discourse. You're supposed to be explaining to each other how you came up with an answer or your why behind it. Um, because everyone thinks so differently, something that I'm seeing in Carnegie is it gives you all the different ways to solve a problem so that a student finds what works best for them. In the past, we've always taught math Here's how you do it, these are the steps, go through it, you learn it, you do it over and over and again. Now it's giving us the opportunity to build on, here's how you can do it using models, here's how you can do it using a formula, here's how you can do it using something else, and the student can then, at the end of it, figure out which way works best for them. So it really is student focused. Um, some of the grows, I think, is, of course, because we've been teaching procedurally in the past, it is hard for us to teach conceptually. So our teachers are having a difficult time shifting gears. Um, but I think it's just going to come with time. So again, just like the rest of them said, so I'm not going to repeat myself over and over again, we've told them just, just survive the year. We've got to get through it. We've got to get the experience in it, and then we can move forward. Um, we did not have all of the supplies for the lessons because unfortunately with Carnegie, they don't come with kits. Um, it doesn't require a whole lot of uh, manipulatives like what we have at our younger grades, but it does require things like patty paper is a huge one and that's consumable. Um, we had to order some of that and, and Ms. Adias was able to get some of that for our eighth grade teachers. Um, so some of those things like the supplies is what we have to, I generated a list of things for each lesson that they have, uh, that they would need. So I bring it to their attention. And then of course, if they need something that they can't get, I will get it for them. Um, and then the amount of pre-work, that's really the biggest piece of it. We do have PLC and we meet every single day. I meet with them every single day, uh, or three times a week and they meet with each other every single day. Um, so they have the time to go through it, but everyone's a different type of learner. So some, they prefer to do the work on their own at home, um, and some will do it during their conference at school, uh, but they are taking the time, and they are aware of how time-consuming it is. So that's something that, um, even though it's a grow, uh, our teachers are doing the work. So I don't see anyone that's just flat out not doing it. They are all doing, and they're putting in all of the time that they need. Um, on to Amplify. <laughs> And there's just some pictures I can kind of go through. Um, our eighth grade classroom is, uh, they were doing a hands-on activity and they were working in pairs. Our seventh grade classroom, they, again, you're seeing group work, they're sitting together. Um, and then the other component that we have at the middle school level is Mathia. And that is a AI program that works with the students. It puts them and gives them, um, it, does, it works at their level. So if they master something, it takes them to the next thing, even if the teachers haven't taught it yet. And in the beginning, we were a little concerned with that. We had students, you know, I don't get this, I don't know how to do this, and the teachers were overwhelmed with the amount of students. But that just tells you, you have a class that is ready to move on to the next thing. So that's a great tool that teachers can use for um, data and just making decisions instructionally for their for their kids. Plus there's Mathia days built into the instructional Yes, and those are non-negotiable. We did, we did explain to our teachers that was something. It's the individual learning. So the group learning, the together part is where you're doing it with the class and as you're teaching. And then the Mathia days, it's pretty much two to three days after a lesson. So they teach a lesson every single day. I didn't put this in the presentation, but we only have 45 minutes in our day, um, and, our, and our instruction is much longer than that. So our teachers do have to adjust quite a bit on what to cover, and we make sure that we are understanding what the TEAK is asking to be covered so that the teachers teach to what it needs to in that, in that um, complexity. Um, and so, yes, they do have a lot of time for that. Also, during Mathia days, that's when teachers can pull small groups. So if you have a group of kids that are on Mathia and they're working on the individual piece, then you can pull a small group of kids and work on mastery for things that they maybe didn't get during the, the week or during that class time. For Amplify, um, okay, our teachers, um, there's a lot of opportunity for writing, and that is new. Um, writing came back to us this year <clears throat> on all pieces of STAR. So before it was just in seventh grade. So a lot of our students, and fourth grade too, right? So a lot of our students hadn't seen this writing piece 
they weren't used to getting that instruction, and now it's everywhere. Um, they even have opportunity for writing in Carnegie, so there, it's there. Um, so that's something that's enjoyable for the teachers, that they're, the kids are now actually expected to write more. Um, the students are very interested in the content of the text. I will say the rigor is very evident. Excuse me, sorry. Bless you. Um, and, but the, the st so right now our eighth grade team is reading um, Frankenstein, I believe, and um, our seventh grade team is reading A Raisin in the Sun. And our sixth grade team, uh, they're doing a mystery unit, I think, this six weeks. But the, the stuff keeps the kids interested in it. So the text is what really gets the kids um, to stay and engaged in it. Uh, they also love the option of using the print versus uh, the online. So the online component, um, some of our teachers have taken that and run with it, and they use it all the time, so our kids are used to it already. And some will go back and forth between the two. It just depends on whether it's just teacher preference. But they like the option of having both. Um, grows for this, uh, the Amplify platform, which is our ELA information, um, that one is very robust. There is so much that the teachers have to be able to go through. Those lessons are built for 60 minutes, and we only have a 45-minute time frame. So we either have to split it to fit it in two days, or we cut it down to fit it in one. And so the teachers having to make that decision is a little bit more difficult. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of experience with English, so I try my best to help them uh, make those decisions, but a lot of times they rely on each other and just their knowledge of the TEKS to, get, to make sure that they're covering what they need to. Um, so just making those instructional decisions can be a little overwhelming. And then the amount of time. They, they have to read everything. Part of the, the internalization process, which is a vocab word of the year, um, it's, it takes a lot of time because they have to read all of the text. They have to know what they're going to be presenting with their students. There may be some sensitive content that they have to take out. So those things are important for them so that they are aware of what it is. You can no longer just walk into the classroom and just teach whatever. You have to prepare. Um, and that's on both sides of HQIM materials. Um, and then one thing that is a drawback, and I'm hoping we can get that fixed soon, is we don't have a pacing calendar for Amplify. So it, it's not provided like it is in, in Carnegie. So our teachers don't know exactly what they need to cover and when. Um, I think they came in during intercession and worked, and they were able to plan for the six weeks, which was a huge help. They were really appreciative of, of being able to do that um, because they don't have what to teach every day, and they have to pick and choose based on what their students need. And everyone's classroom is different. So that's why it's a little hard for us to say, just teach these pieces when your students may need something else. Um, but they have more than enough in the curriculum to pull from what they need, and it is very repetitive. They're going to constantly see things spiraled in throughout the year. So once this is set up this year, then we're just going to kind of roll with it every year. It just happens to be the first year that we're having to figure out. Definitely. Yes. Okay. And a lot of our teachers are making, I told them, as you're going through it, put a sticky note in your book. Okay, omit this or add this or take this out or the kids did terrible here. We're going to do this or change it up. A lot of them are already reflecting on their lessons and making those notes for next year. And that is their lesson plans. The internalization, the note taking, they're not having to re. Uh, regurgitate and redo a whole lesson, that is their lesson plan, them taking the notes and just internalizing the lesson. So that's another way that the campus admin have kind of alleviate that. They're not taking having that to. off their plate. Yes, exactly. Okay. And um, so I have a seventh grade, our inclusion class, one of our teachers was helping. You can see the, the print materials on their desk, um, our sixth grade. I didn't get to get into their classrooms until last week. So, um, but you can see there's a bulletin board that one of the teachers took the time to um, create it for this unit. So they're doing yellow fever and you can see the, like the mosquito there and the, and, uh, the destruction that it caused. And then our eighth grade, um, Miss Brock, she uh, did an awesome job introducing Frankenstein. She dimmed the lights. She had like a blanket on the floor and they had flashlights and they were reading the book with the flashlights. I thought it was super cool. I was so happy she invited me in so that I could see that and witness it with her kids. So it took them a little, this was this six weeks, that was just from last week. Um, it took them a little bit of time to get comfortable with it. And I think our teachers are great teachers. They're wonderful. Um, they know their content and they'll eventually get the gist of it. It's just taking the time. Yes. And a lot of them are perfectionists, so yes. they yes. don't like the not knowing. They don't like yes. that ambiguity. For sure. Yes. 
But I will tell you, one of your teachers that, that we were both having to meet with quite uh-huh. frequently yes. in the beginning of the year came up to me at the football game Friday night, hugged me, and was like, I said, how's it going? I haven't been over there this week. And she was like, I'm perfect. I'm content. What did she say? It was a C word. It was... Um, but don't change she, a thing. Yeah, don't change a thing. Don't take don't, kids from don't me. Don't take yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, she yeah. said, don't take any of my kids uh-huh. from me. We're getting it together. Mm-hmm. But you can give me more kids, but don't take yeah. any of my kids. So, And that was a teacher that we were like, come on, girl, just yeah. give me a chance. <laughs> just you know, And I was meeting with her all the time. Audius was meeting with her all the time. I know Annalisa was meeting with her all the mm-hmm. time. I mean, we were all working really diligently with this kid and – I mean, with this teacher, and she came up and hugged me at the football game, and I was like, oh, gosh, what's she going to uh-huh. No, But it was, so they are moving and shaking. They are seeing the fruits of their labor, too, because kids are performing at this higher level than they ever had asked them to perform at before. So. And you've uh, seen a lot of that sponges, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. And eight weeks is not that long. It hasn't. We haven't even given a whole lot of time to even see the outcome of the fruits of their labor, right? So it probably is just now starting to just get a glimpse of what's actually it's happening. It's only going to get better. Like the level of engagement, like they were saying, is there. It's This is really supposed to be student-led. You know, as opposed to the teacher let so you know there's a which lot lends of, itself to TIA exactly, exactly. So uh, a lot of great things are happening in the classroom um, at the district level. Just some of the feedback, some of the glows. I really think that you know at the district level, I think we work very well as a team. There's a lot of uh, multiple layers of support at the campus. You know, you have your admin, you have instructional facilitators at the district level. You know, we're on. You know. We are constantly in conversation with these wonderful ladies. You know, we're like, what can we do for you? Is there anything that you need from us? Um, So that level of support um, and just the multiple partnerships, too, that we have, you know, like Texas Lesson Study and then Kelly Harmon that's also working at the primary and the intermediate. So just, I mean, like I said, we really, really want to provide our teachers with the support because, like I said, we've been there. And so it's hard, but we're, we know, we keep on telling them, just trust the process. Wait it's, till January. It's going to get better. I, we, we promise. I promise that. Um, and then we have foundation grant that's going to be able to help pay for materials in the future. Uh, right now, we're a part of the LASSO grant. And so right now, we're starting off with just the, we're focusing on an instructional framework for math. And so CNI is working on that. And so it's an instructional framework for math on how we teach math here in TM. And that's going to be a line K, K-12. So this year, that is our goal. Next year, we want to add um, ELA. What is our instructional framework for teaching English language art? And we want to make that transparent. You know, like, like you said, we want to be, you know, that premier district where everyone's like, you know, I want to go to TM because other academics. So we're working in that direction. And so, you know, we're going to put that together and share that by the end of the, the year. We'll have a, a product for that. And we'll share that with you as well. Uh, materials, you know, I think number one, being able to get the materials on time for our teachers. I know that was, you know, a huge, they want it. Like I said, they had it digitally, but you know, I'm the same way. I like my paper, you know, I like my hard book. I want to be able to write in it. And so um, I think that's a glow. They were we were able to get the materials and put it in their hands. And then again, very important that vertical and horizontal alignment from grade level. We we are seeing that. You're talking about narratives. Or everyone's doing pers- personal narratives. And not only that, but the content. They're talking about the Renaissance next year. They're going to add another layer. You know, exposing them to another piece of the content. You know, it's just filling that that knowledge gap, and so it builds upon it um, itself from grade to grade. And then again, um, raising the rigor, that high quality instruction. Like Kenna was saying, we're teaching up here now, not here. So um, I think that's another glow. And then the PLC. Uh, what are your? Um, I think. You guys have, you know, there's a formal process for a PLC. They have an agenda. I mean, it is like, I've seen Shelby in action. I was there. Um, she was leading the PLC for Texas Lesson Study. I mean, it is like time. Five minutes to do this, ten minutes to turn and talk 
with your, uh, your neighbor, just like we're doing with students in the classroom. We're seeing those same behaviors modeled in our PLC. So there's no time like to vent. It's like we're here to look at student data. <laughs> I'm serious, student data. I mean, we have, uh, we have an agenda. And so, you know, kudos to these ladies because they're the ones leading those PLCs um, with our teachers. So um, I think it's, it's just, it's nice to see continuity. And so that's what we're seeing also on our campuses. And then the opportunities for growth, and we're already seeing some growth in some of these, is just the onboarding of those reluctant teachers. Mm -hmm. As their peers are starting to see success with their students, they're getting a little less reluctant to engage in it as well. They're all engaging in it, yes. but to what degree is, yeah. is the... Issue. is the deciding factor, exactly. yeah. yeah. Um, I, I know we did walkthroughs at the intermediate the other day, and from this class to this class to this class, I saw the same question asked, and it was asked differently in this class. It was the students performed that, that task differently in this class, and the students performed differently in this class too. But every single kid mm -hmm. came up with a, with a way to solve a very complex word problem. And one classroom, the kids suggested to do uh, number bonds. This one over here was a little more procedural. This one over here did a little differently. And then this class over here got to do any way they wanted. They discussed how they got there. Mm -hmm. So, And that was an inclusion classroom. Mm -hmm. So um, I think those are, we're getting there with the reluctancy. Mm -hmm. um, we still feel like there's some um, time needed to build that belief and trust in the process. I've been through it at a previous district, and in January, something happens, the kids and the teachers just get it, and they finally take that deep breath, and they're like, okay, I can do this, but it happens in January, particularly in seventh grade math. Um, the material distribution is constantly ongoing, and it is labor intensive. Every new module, module, has a booklet for a kid. So every single new unit, our instructional staff is redistributing boxes and boxes and boxes of student workbooks. And that is literally heavy lifting. In the beginning of the year, Dr. Shaw and I were able to be on each campus and, and do some of that heavy lifting. But as the year has gone and we have our tasks to do too, we've not been as helpful with that as I'm sure that they all would like. But the teachers are also now starting yes. to help with that process too. But that's an area that we've got to figure out maybe some main streaming something. Um, the cost sustainability, we all know that it is expensive. It is very expensive, but with the LASSO grant mm -hmm. and then also TEA has just released that they are going to pitch in an extra $40 mm -hmm. per student. If you use HQIM, we're going to be getting some of that sustainability through that as well, which we weren't anticipating. We were just going to suffer through and, mm -hmm. you know, take money from yeah. here to pay over <laughs> here and figure it out. But um, I think that's going to help with the sustainability. Um, in terms of communication with parents, Every single HQIM product has a very robust parent communication system. But our teachers are just now starting to use it. So that, that's where the grow is. Um, there's videos, there's uh, lesson tips and tricks, there's everything that a parent would probably not read all the, the time, but it is there for them. And I'm guilty, so I can say that. Um, it's a lot that comes through. It is a lot that happens. So, uh, but we like at the at the middle school in particular, they trained their kids to show the parents where those help videos are. So when the parents are like, wait, why are you doing commutative property here instead of procedural lining it up? And the the kids are now trained to go and tell the parents where to find that video. So that's that's a new thing too. That's um, in the last couple of weeks. Um, grading policies and procedures. I don't know who's having more of heartburn with this, teachers or parents or kids, because it is at a higher level. And so we want to communicate to parents that they are at 70% understanding. But we have not done that historically. 
historically we have said they're completing all their tasks mm -hmm. and so maybe they don't get it but they still have an A in the class and we really felt like that was a disservice to our parents because we're communicating improperly we're telling their the parents oh yeah they're fine really they're not and so now our grades are truly more reflective of their level of mastery and so when they get their star tests back or when they get these assessments from these high quality instructional materials they're not shocked at where they are and neither are the kids so eventually that mastery will go up those grades will go up um, the good thing about particularly a like like k well all of them really is that this class is grading the same thing as this class and so like at the high school level when we get there the gpa pushers you're going to have the same thing happening from this teacher as this teacher. There's not going to be like, well, I want to transfer to this class because it's mm -hmm. easier. They're, they are grading these same things. So um, so that could be a, a gloat. I think, yeah. yeah. It could be. It but could go but we're yeah. still growing yes. Yes. In, that, yes. in that growing pain. Um, and then uh, differentiation. I mean, that before HQIM, differentiation for SPED and 504 students was a struggle. I think we're getting closer to being really good at it. Um, and I think HQIM does provide that differentiation within it, but are we great at it yet? We're still getting there, so it's still a grow. But y'all said there's AI in it, right? Yes. So, so that's doing part of the work for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with yeah. the levels of the kids as they grow with it. Right. Uh, for sure in Mathia in uh, the middle school level. That is really, really intuitive technology. <laughs> Um, and so what one kid's screen looks like looks very different than another kid's screen. ST Math is the exact same way. It has a, um, a roadmap for kids, and so once they take their pretest, they follow their roadmap. So it maybe doesn't align with what we're teaching today, but it aligns with what you need. So ST Math is that way. Mathia is that way. Um, our Amira, which we're using for... Yes for reading is that way. And then in middle school, for our struggling readers, we're us using something called Reading Plus, and it is intuitive in that nature as well. So, um, and that's particularly driven towards dyslexia. Um, and then we're working with technology um, on our end mm -hmm. for the communication piece. We've built a website, I don't know if it's on the next thing, but uh, we built a website. Jennifer Stewart has helped build an HQIM website. Um, it's just a website, <laughs> so it's not that helpful yet. We're transparent, <laughs> but it will be. It will be really helpful uh -huh. for parents because they can find out what module their kid is on and go straight to our our district HQIM website and pull the parent the parent helps from there. Awesome. Um, so you won't have to search through your parent squares, which is still a really really good thing that our our team is doing. Mm -hmm. But eventually, they won't have to search through those messages. It'll be right there on our website. The shell is set up. We just have to put in the, the stuff for it. And then we're also promoting, like, this is district-approved curriculum. So if the, if the teachers want to use some, something that's outside, you know, the curriculum, it, there's a vetting process. There's a form that they have to fill out, and they have to justify. We're not saying no. They just have to justify why they're going to use it. And those curriculum or instructional materials can be used during in, uh, small group instruction. But we're saying this is the, the curriculum that we're this using tier one. for core instruction. So we've had many teachers, and, you know, we've said we've approved some, but they have to justify why they want to use that. And then uh, just we want to reiterate that we're growing together, together in this. If you can see this picture, you, the mouse is backwards. <laughs> this one, okay, the top, right. Up there. Uh -huh. That is like one tenth of the boxes yeah. that oh, we have. Module stuff? Yes. yes. It was in the That tenth. was one tenth of the intermediate mm -hmm. modules. That was only fifth grade. That, about yeah, that about only like, fifth yes. grade because they had blue labels on them. Yes. Fourth grade was just like that, and third grade was just like that. And so it's really always going to be like that because that's the actual children's <clears throat> workbooks, yes. right? That's, that's what they're really working in. Student. Okay. Yes. And that is across the board. Yes. That is in every content. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it is some labor-intensive yes. distribution. <laughs> yes. That's why it's in the gross. Mm -hmm. And we did it all in one day. We did all, yeah. All in one day. Um, and then at the bottom, then, underneath where it says together, that is a PLC at the uh, primary. 
And so, you know, kind of like you see, you know, students in groups, same thing. We have our teachers working in groups and going over the lesson and trying to talk to your partner, you know, and, and the same behaviors that we're seeing in the classroom, we're also seeing with our teachers during their PLC. And uh, the top picture up there mm -hmm. is from a Texas lesson study initial. Mm -hmm. That was done before we left last year. Mm -hmm. So they had some initial training in it mm -hmm. before they left school last mm -hmm. year, which for some reason, Summer wiped that from most of their brains <laughs> because they, some of them what? acted like, what, we're, we're doing this Apple thing? Bus? Yes, we are. Yes. Um, so just so you yeah. know, I mean, like, there's been a lot of pre-work yes. going into it. Yes. Um, these are some of the communication tools mm -hmm. that we've used. We didn't do a screenshot of our yeah. district website just because there's not much to it yet, but um, there, there will be. And then our campus staff and our campus yes. teachers have done a great job communicating Absolutely. through Parent Square. Um, they'll they'll send home remedial stuff. They'll send home extra. Like mm -hmm. I know my twins are in third grade, and one got a set of threes for multiplication, and one got a set of sevens for multiplication because they've done some work in that. Mm -hmm. So I know there's even differentiation mm -hmm. in that. Um, so I. I think the teachers are really working so hard, and they're working in the right direction, and we're just working to support them. Yes. Enjoying every minute of it. Absolutely. So. Okay, so next steps. What are our next steps for um, rolling out um, Age County? Um, campus and district level walkthroughs with positive feedback. So we've actually, you know, started those walkthroughs. Uh, and like I said, we're in there, you know, to, you know, to talk about the positive things that are going on in the classroom. And like I said, we're see if there's a common trend that we need to address, you know, we have instructional facilitators, we have our admin, we'll address those. But right now, you know, we just want to go in there and just really support our teachers and say they're doing a great job. And they are. Like I said, they are in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't work the mouse backwards. So um, even at the district level, you know, we have our instructional facilitators. They have, like, their little ways of rewarding teachers you know you know thank you for allowing us to be in your classroom at the district level we have our you know little you know little uh, I guess we should say little knickknacks that we have that you know when we go we'll leave a positive note saying you're doing a great job thank you for allowing us in your classroom so that's one thing that we really want to um, continue um, and then data analysis protocols um, this Wednesday we're actually going to meet at every single campus where we're going to conduct our data meetings so um, CNI, Mr. Van Maitre, um, admin, all of our instructional facilitators, we're going to have data meetings and we're going to go over the beginning of the year data. How did they do last year? Where are our kids this year? And so what are, we, what are some of our strengths? What are some of our weaknesses? What are we doing to support those kids that are not where they need to be? So that will kick off this Wednesday. We will be at every campus from 8.30 till 2 o'clock, you know, 45 minutes a piece because that is very important and a lot of our campuses they've already you know taken off they've already met with their teachers I mean they already have a plan of action but we definitely want to go to every campus and, and talk about the data and see where our kids are continued support um, you know from multiple levels you know from us from our partnerships from our instructional facilitators our admin like I said truly um, I've never been in a district where we're like in total I mean it's just like every day and constant communication, you know, with our admin, with our instructional facilitators on the campuses. That's very important to us, too, that we are at the campus um, visiting with our instructional facilitators and just kind of uh, debriefing, too, how are things going on our campuses. So we kind of get that feedback as well. And then, again, listening to our teachers, training as requested by teachers. Um, in addition to Texas lesson studies, some of our teachers have, you know, requested additional training uh, from Carnegie. Like Kenna was saying at the beginning, at the beginning of the year or last year, June first and second. June first and June second, we actually had Carnegie out to um, train our middle school teachers for for the day. It's very very expensive. Um, like Amplify for one day of training is like sixty four hundred dollars, but with the Lasso grant. Uh, we're going to probably be able to provide some of those additional trainings for our teachers because that's what the Lasso Grant provides. It, it gives you bunnies so that you can offer those PD trainings to your teachers. So we're really, um, like I said, looking forward to those grants. And then um, I know the middle school, this past intercession, um, teachers had an opportunity 
to come and plan. Melanie, that's what her teachers wanted, so Melanie made that happen. So Melanie said they came back, and they were, like, just really gung-ho about, you know, the, the lessons that they had put together. So, you know, truly, I, I'm going to say that we want what's best. And so, and we know if teachers are happy, it's kind of like, you know, the, the wife is happy, everybody's happy. So kind of like the same model with our teachers. If they're happy, you know, then everybody's happy. And so, um, like I said, our, our goal is really just to, to support them. And so, um, so really that's pretty much, you know, where we're at right now. And we'll, you know, I'm sure during this, um, this school year, we will be providing you another update and maybe revisit some of these questions that you guys had, you know, about maybe how our <coughs> teachers feeling now. And I'm like she said, a lot of us said, I'm sure if we were to go back and ask, get some feedback from our teachers, I'm sure there might be some um, more positive things that are coming out of this, but we definitely want to come back and share some of those updates with you and just kind of keep you in the loop on how things are, are going with HQIM. So to give you some coming attractions, uh, next month we'll hear from DLI, and you'll get um, some good information on how the dual language initiative is going. And then um, every month you will, we will examine a goal from the strategic plan that we'll talk about tonight, uh, whether it's um, identifying baseline data or... Um, looking at progress towards meeting the goal. So that gives us an opportunity to do what we learned in Lone Star Governance, which is dominate um, as much as we can our agenda items with stuff that's related, directly related to our kids. Great job. Yes. Great. And then you know what? We'll even get some feedback from students. So we'll put that on our mm -hmm. on our to do. On our to do. Get some I just feedback. think that's great because yeah. they'll they give yes. you a really big insight. Yes. They're the ones doing it. Yes. And um, I, I mean like, mine I like that little difference. Mine needs a tutorial uh, pass of every day. It needs a cot in there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be sure to include that next time. <laughs> Not the cot, but the students. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Y'all are doing a great job. Great job. I got it. Okay. Let's close out then. Thank you. Really proud of it. Thank you so much. Great. Your mom. Great job. Yes. All right, moving on to. Um, Discussion slash action agenda item number two, discuss and consider approval of second reading of update 121 local. Dr. White. Great. Madam President, members of the board, uh, we're bringing update 121 back to you once more for the second read. Um, nothing that we're bringing forward tonight has changed from the prior um, reading, which was conducted last month. And so you've got eight policies for approval up for tonight. Um, I would say from my perspective, being uh, focused more on the uh, student instruction part of these updates, the biggest one is number uh, eight here, which is student welfare, freedom from bullying. That's a top down from TA to each district requirement. Um, but I also want you to know that we were kind of already anticipating that update. So all of our handbooks, all of our committees, all of our procedures, the surveys, the things that are being asked of us that are new are all in the works and being completed um, as if we already had the policy adopted in place. And so tonight, it's really just more formality than anything, just to kind of keep things uh, kosher with TASB, our policies online. And so are there any questions about the second read? Pretty, pretty, bland or just kind pretty straightforward of, stuff. Yeah. A lot of it's verbiage. A lot of it's just updating language to a, uh, match and align with other uh, prior updates. And I will say that from tonight, update 122 will be forthcoming fairly shortly here. So in the next month or so, you'll be seeing that one come, and it'll look more the same. Yeah. Any questions, concerns on any of these policies? Right. Madam President, members of the board, 
It is the administration's recommendation that the board approve update 121 local as presented. I'll make that motion that the uh, board approve update 121 local as presented. Do I have a second? I'll make a second. Leo seconds. All those in favor? None opposed. Motion carries 6 0. Moving on to agenda item number three discuss and consider approval of the 2023 2024 budget amendments. Mr. Carroll? Yes, uh, you have before you the board amendment, and this is just taking the salaries of all the uh, full time employees, basic employees, and backing out uh, the raise that was presented on August 31st. And it's, it's, it's only the salaries uh, of all the positions in the district by the appropriate functions. And there is some adjustment, there, there are some other adjustments that are net, like we've had some people leave, we had some new hires. I've, I've taken into account those things uh, as well. And it's, it's basically putting the budget back to what the actual salaries are at this point. <coughs> What's the percentage on the general fund you say that you like? 25%. Do you mean 25? like what you want your fund balance to be? Yeah, I remember when I started you said there's something. Yeah, some it's the optimum fund balance is at least three months of operating, which is 25% of your operating expenses. But you may want to, um, let's look at that for a second. So right now, we're at 14 million, correct? Okay. When, when the audit comes in for 22, 23, it could be around a million dollars deficit or a little less. Hopefully, a little less. A little less than that, correct? Right. So that would put us uh, 13 and some change, okay? Uh, and then for the 23, 24 budget year that we're in right now, we're going to do everything humanly possible, whether it's staff or energy or travel or professional development to minimize the projected deficit right now so that we don't go to 11 million, that it's higher than that. That's the goal. Fair to say? Fair to say, and and keep in mind, this is just this is in the middle of the first month of the new fiscal yeah, year. These are estimates. These are estimates. These are, but you will see at the October meeting, I will have the September financials. We'll see what happened in the month of September. Um, and I was just telling Mr. Van Mitri, once um, and, and once I get an idea of the payroll for the month, because there's a lot of payroll. A lot of the TRS doesn't get calculated till the end of the month when we do our TRS reporting. And once that gets posted. I have an idea of okay. This is what this is what the benefits are going to be for the month, and I can automatically project that out twelve months and see where we stand. And but the other thing about benefits too is all the all, any tutoring that's done after school, if it's paid out of the general fund, any tutoring, any extra duty, anything that we do extra, including all the subs, you know, that's that's got a benefit to it too. There's the subs are paying FICA, they're paying the seven point six five percent that we're matching. So the sub impact, that's, that's, that's going to see uh, where, where we stand every month. Um, and, and we'll see the trends and we'll see what, what we're doing. And at, at every month we'll get, the get, we'll hopefully get closer and closer. And the guesses will, once, we, once the actuals build more than uh, what's left in the year, you know, we get closer and closer to the end. So you'll see that. Were, um, I really like the report from Friday. Me too. We're hitting, I was curious. How, we're how, we're how hitting the 94 homecoming do. No, I'm talking about for the year. Actually, the Friday after homecoming was like a regular Friday. And I was, we had about 300 kids absent. And I was very pleased with our kids that had a, you know, they had a parade on Wednesday. They had a, a, a lot of fun on Thursday night. Uh, the dance went until Saturday. Um, and they came to school on Friday. I'm really proud of our parents and our kids, and and for the year attendance, I think we're about three percent up. We are. It's holding steady right around uh, low nine ninety fours. 
right now. Um, Which but is really good compared to our neighbors. Good. Very pleased yeah. to see that. Yeah. That's awesome. We need it to stay there. Yes, we do. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Philip. On the on the subs, do we have any? Uh, and I don't know if it, how it would apply or not. I'm just throwing out this question: Do we have any retiree hires on the subbing side of it? Uh, do, do we still have to buy? Do we still have to pay penalties on no, that? We don't have to pay no, if you're subbing. There's it's no a surcharge. Daily rate, right? There's, well, I'm just asking. But there's, there's no surcharges on. There's it, no surcharges. We, we have quite a few retirees that are subs, but there's no surcharges no on that. No surcharges. Okay. I have a question. Um, uh, are there any attendance incentives for, for kids? There are at the campuses. At the campus level? Yes. Campus level. And in fact, uh, <laughs> middle school does it very well. I'd say they're the best right now. Yeah, they, they, they hit a day last week in 97%. Unheard of. You, you don't Before. see 97% wow. at middle school. Now, intermediate is our, our highest attendance campus. They're hitting 94, 95 on a regular basis. Uh, uh, primary, uh, you know, mamas keep their babies home if there's, a, and, and we, you know, we, we want them to. Uh, uh, but I'm pleased with our attendance right now. Awesome. What do you attribute that success, the attendance success at the intermediate? I'm sorry? I think awareness. I think there's a, I think uh, there's not a crisis mentality with our budget situation, but definitely a sense of urgency that we're seeing. Well, I know with these new programs, the HQIM programs, if these kids are not in class, oh, they're it hurts. behind. It hurts. And I think parents started to see that with the first seven weeks of grades when they came out. Yes, I think um, you're because right. they're used to seeing straight A's, and there was some grace that had to be given, at least in my household. So um, if they're not in school, they're missing curriculum and they're behind, and that's behind in everything that they're doing. So I think that's starting to catch on too. Where uh, I'm sorry, Ben, um, Leo, where where we haven't come to um, an agreement because it 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 it's such a sensitive issue with attendance incentive. Um, monetary um, bonuses. Um, we've we've talked about doing something that's that's really innovative, which is um, having a lottery, um, having a, a a dollar figure. Let's pick a number out: twenty five hundred dollars for a grading period, and if you're perfect attendance, you could get possibly a $2,000. One person could get a $2,000. I worry about doing that um, with um, the budget situation we're in and paying that high of, of an incentive for coming to work. But we've, we've seen through a little investigation that um, if you want to get a, a, a uh, an uptick on attendance, that gets an uptick. When there's a chance where if you come every day, there's a lottery, only those people come every day. Or if you come every day, you may do like the NBA does. You get five of your names in a lottery. If you miss one, three. If you miss two, one. So the odds are greater. Uh, then we've kicked around. Um, well, if you come every day, you get $100. $100 bill at the end of the six weeks. Um, Are you talking teachers or students? Teachers. Oh, teachers. teachers. Oh, yeah. uh, I thought you were talking students. <laughs> no, no, te oh, teachers. You're going to go back to school. <laughs> teachers. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, because Philip has added uh, $125,000 in this year's budget for subs uh, and, and taking, um, I don't know, um, if you do $2,500 to six weeks, um, it's twelve thousand five hundred dollars, but we're still in the process of having those right. conversations. What are you doing for students? That's though? what he was. She has students. students. I'm not sure what, what they're doing? doing. They're all uh, each campus is doing something different. Really and truly, it's the kind of 
if you come every day, there's going to be like a surprise or an event or some sort of celebration or activity. Popcorn, awaiting for you. candy, I saw them. Driven by food. Yeah, the, the food snacks. patrol. But that's, yeah. that's uh, a drive for AirPods yeah. and a tablet. Yeah. 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 So years ago, we used to do that. At the high school, there was a drawing every every six weeks. If you had perfect attendance. There were, uh, there were bicycles. There were, you know, uh, at that time, uh, headsets and yeah. that kind AirPods of thing. And all. Air, yes. Well, at that time, it was just <laughs> walk, walkies, <laughs> okay. walkmans, yeah. walkmans, yes, yeah. So I was just curious about the campus level uh, of students, you know, attendance and sentence. Nothing has changed with the incentives from probably when, when you knew, because nothing really that we have as available options have changed. It's really what Mr. Van Matry was saying: the the persistence in our communication, the reminders, and the kind of tasking not just the staff but the students with the challenge of attendance. And then, of course, upping the rigor with our curriculum and the fact that we've been very consistent with the application of the curriculum. Like Ms. Boone said, if you are not there, you can't get the materials. And if you come back, we're moving on to the next lesson. So if you are kind of habitual um, misser at school, that's gonna, you're going to see that very quickly in the grades. And so because our community, our parents um, are very much on top of those things, um, to me, I've seen a greater emphasis from the parental side in terms of the support to get students back to school rather than hearing that additional excuse, allowing the student to stay home another day. They're coming right back the next day. Very, very little of the repeat offenders that we would typically see from last year show up. That's been very little this year so far. That's awesome. It could show that they're also engaged as well. Exactly. They're, they're wanting to come to school or don't want to miss that's not that's a good that's a great thing yeah. it is bringing the fun back into learning right mm -hmm. all right do we have a recommendation we do madam president it is the administration's recommendation that the board approve the 2023-2024 budget <coughs> amendment as presented do i have a motion i'll make that motion do i have a second i'll second Leo. I have a motion made by Ben and a second by Leo that the board approve the 2023-2024 budget amendments as presented. All those in favor? Any opposed? Well, I'm not opposed. Oh. Just late. Motion carries 6-0. All right, moving on to agenda item number four. Discuss and consider approval of the TMISD strategic plan. Madam President, members of the board, I am so proud of this strategic plan. Uh, it has been months in the making, um, dialoguing with teachers and administrators and parents, uh, meeting um, once a week, uh, every Wednesday, uh, having one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, the opinion survey that went out uh, was um, embedded in this, um, a new vision statement. I don't know how old the vision and mission statements are. I like there. this. I really do. I do too. I like it. Uh, it's about time. The, um, that really makes my heart happy, Janie. That, that cause well, I, I read through, let me just say Please this do. at the very top. Please I do. read through this plan. I read it. I, I, um, I, I took it in. I I really like the mission and the vision statement that, that this committee put together. I really like it. The one that we've had, we've had for years. And it's like, you know, this is really, um, this really speaks to our academic um, excellence that we have always had. It really does the whole plan. I'm really pleased with it. Um, the, the rewriting the vision and the mission statement is, is real real strong. I'm, I just congratulate the committee that put this together because it's it's very well done. Well, and it's exciting because it's not just here and now, right? Mm -hmm. No, this is looking forward. Yes. So very, very good. Well, thank you. The, the vision um, is supposed to have goals and mm -hmm. plans for the future and where we are going. And, and I like that TMISD shall be the preeminent education organization where all staff are valued, parents are partners, and students are empowered to reach their full potential. And then the mission reflects our core values, our foundation, and our culture, 
where through high expectations and equitable opportunity, TMISD will focus on the whole child by providing a safe environment and high quality curriculum with diverse and enriching experiences. And then we, we talk about our core values, what, what, what makes TM, TM. Um, and then if you'll turn it over, our strategic priorities, uh, student learning, safe schools, mental health and well-being, uh, effective educators, uh, communication and transparency and fiscal responsibility. And then we, talk, we discuss in the next five years where we want to be. What, what is a profile of a second grader going to third grade? What do we want a fifth grader to sixth grade? What do we want eighth grade to high school? And then ultimately, what do we want our graduates to be? Um, and then um, our goal is not just if you qualify, but we want all four-year-olds to be coming to school here. And then those three-year-olds that do qualify. Um, and then we want to... Um, talk about something that we really don't talk about, and that's treating a child that has some um, deficiencies, whether it's cognitive or behavior, putting them in special ed after uh, MTSS or RTI, and then exiting them, um, and, and really looking at how many kids I have gone through the treatment, um, rang the bell, and now they're out. N knowing that uh, there are children with um, high needs, with profound disabilities, that, that will stay in there and we will meet their needs. I'm not talking about those children. Uh, they can still ring the bell. They can still ring the bell. That's right. And we want them, that's a very good point, and we want them to ring the bell. Um, and then um, where 100% um, of our facilities, and this is, this is what resonated, and you'll see this a lot uh, with the bond campaign. Um, we're not interested in building Taj Mahals. We're not interested in winning architectural awards. What we're interested in is 100% of our facilities modern, safe, and relevant. Functional. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's what this bond will do. Uh, and uh, a lot of the scope of the bond was born with the development of these goals. I can't tell you how excited I am about this strategic plan. It's mentioned in there several times. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I have. I have one thing. Sure. Who came up with the word Ruthless. 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 Ruthlessly intentional. Does yeah. anybody understand what connotation ruthless has with it? Genghis Khan? Uh, I think really Hold aggressive, on. aggressive. Like warrior well, style. Enthusiastically. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> ruthless, that has a bad connotation. When I read that, I went, wait a minute. I went back and read it over again, and I'm going, that does not have a place in this. We can change that word. Enthusiastically, intentionally, you know, or something. Yeah. We'll, we'll change that word. When I think word. of Ruthless, I think of Genghis Khan, Pol Pot, the I SS, remember that discussion. World War II, and, and it was, it the, was, it was like, you know, we're going to, we're going to, yeah. we're going to be ruthless with our desire for this to happen, but... Um, I think we were trying to find, find another way to say persistent. Persistent would be, but, but we'll mean, change the word. I mean, ruthless, that has a bad connotation. I agree. I mean, I, what I th th thought of, the first thing I thought about, I started thinking about the Japanese way they <laughs> invaded China. And we then, don't want to be. Then <laughs> Genghis Khan. And then we don't want to send that whole pot message. We'll have you think of other things. We'll change the word. Yeah, we'll change the word. They did theirs ruthlessly, intentionally. They murdered millions of people. What I look forward to in this is, uh, of course, fixing our, like you said, our, our special education, getting them 
where it fits in for our future. But I'm I'm hoping that uh, I'll be around to see the dual language program go all the way through. To, yes. Through, not fifth grade. All the way through. All the way all through. The way through. Because at that point, uh, I think we've we've uh, won the battle or even the war at that point because you know um, once those kids get out into the community or into college and stuff, I mean it's they have no idea where they can go with that, and you see it. We saw it at Mazba this weekend. The, these doctors, young people, young with their doctorates, very fluent in Spanish. Some of them with even third languages. And and just, I mean, it's like, wow, man, you know. There was a state rep, the one that organized the whole thing. Uh, she has her doctorates, very fluent in Spanish, English. I mean, you, you wouldn't be able to tell she could speak Spanish the way she did until she opens up her, I mean, but, you know. Well, Chrissy, I think he's going to like Thursday. What do you think? He's going to love Thursday. Take, <laughs> take the tissue. That's all we're saying. That's all I'm going to say. That's all we're going to say. I've been crying since last week. <laughs> okay. Well, uh -oh. I mean, you know, I just, that, you know, when, I remember when you first came in that I went to that conference in, in Dallas, or that, you know, that guy from Dallas just blew me away, that old superintendent from Dallas, on what he did with dual language. Uh, it's just remarkable uh, what's coming out of North Texas with the dual language programming, and here we are. And it took you know uh, Steve Van Major to come in and implement yeah, this thing. Well, still, but you know, uh, it, it, it's finally here, and we're one of the only ones in South Texas yeah. that has this program. Yeah. Because I was asking, you know, other than. Uh, uh, El Paso has it all the way through. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 the, and in the valley, in the valley, they don't even have a dual language program, <laughs> program all the way through. They have a, I think San Benito, one of the ones that he was telling me that they started it also a couple years, but nothing through all the way in the 12th grade. You know, that's in the real Grande Valley, yeah. which you would think would be, but El Paso mm -hmm. does have it. You get it started from, from the primary grades, it's going to keep moving because yeah. that's where the Dr. Delgado mm -hmm. get the kid's voice involved. Yeah. You get yeah. him involved in it and say, hey, I've been learning this up to the fifth grade. What about carrying it on? Yeah, we live in a world where it's, you know, at your fingertips, and this is going to take time, just like this HQIM program. And so when I was sitting here listening to all these great things, but then I was listening to to maybe some of the struggles or the, the grows that we have. Um, God, we've only been in school eight weeks when you actually look at the whole big picture, and that's not very long. So Right, you've come so far from those eight weeks. It, and when you say HQIM, you say DLI, all these are brand-new initiatives that the, the Curriculum and Instruction Department we're taking on, we're ushering in, we're implementing. Come back in three years when all these things have been going for a while. We have gained capacity because we're all brand new ourselves. We have a couple of brand new ifs as well. Once we gain that capacity together, collaboratively working towards the common goals we've set for ourselves, sky's the limit for each program we're talking about, our students, our teachers, our administrators even. Um, I would say from my perspective, the HQIM piece is really bringing everything together and it creates a very singular focus that you can see captured in the strategic plan that's in front of you tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of a better place or a better district to be in right now that's more exciting, more innovative, and just on the cusp of such great things that tonight, for example, just lets you know just how clear the future is and where we're going and how we're going to get there. Um, whether you like it or not, this is where we're going. Mm -hmm. And as you can tell, like, it's an exciting time because, again, the, the initiatives we have allow enough flexibility and creativity for anybody to really come in, make it their own, really kind of put their imprint on whatever initiative or, or curriculum that they're kind of um, being asked to do, which is really exciting because it also has that structure and consistency where the supports and structures are there. So the I'm gonna, teams in place, everything is there for this to be truly successful, short-term and long-term. So I'm going to 
So I'm going to go a little bit further than that. I, I, I think about the world that I live in on a daily basis with my job. Um, we've always put everybody in a little box, right? You got to do it this way, this way. Now we're taking people out of the box. And when you get out into the workforce, you need to be thinking outside of the box to excel. So um, this, I, I just, this is very exciting. All of it is very what, exciting. I'm sorry, just to bring those, but I tell you what my vision is for this district. I love this, everything that we have, we're, we're supporting our teachers. We're giving them the, the materials that they need to, to uh, make our students be successes successful wherever they they go from here but I, my vision for this district is to be the school of choice and i don't mean just in this area i want when people say Tulosa midway that up in north texas they know exactly what what level of excellence this school provides for for our students that's what my vision would be in you know and it could have been you know something that People maybe could only have only thought of, we used to be the school of choice for this area, but I would like to see that to be the school of choice in the state, to be known for our academics, for our excellence, and in, in what we provide our, our teachers to make our students be uh, successful in wh wherever, whatever road they, they take. I would we like need, to see We that. need to be the community of choice. They need to yeah. want to move here. Exactly, for the school. To schools here. Yes, exactly. That's, that's what's being built. What Pat Metri is trying to do with the CTE program, expanding that to keep up with the Robstowns, the Bishops, the Kingsvilles, the others that have implemented such things. And then all the other programs, along with the <coughs> dual language, you know, the primary grades, that's a good thing because I know Ben did. I talked to some people out there and they said, We're doing what? And I told them that. They said, Wow. That's amazing. Y'all are, are good. I said, yes, we've always been good. And they go, okay, where'd you say you were from? And I tell them, they go, oh, where is that? And I tell them, and they go, oh, well, we'll be hearing more about y'all. You know, Our ship and, is not standing still. Thing, it's going forward. The thing Steam. that is is to get the community to know about the progressive thoughts and process that are taking place that will benefit their child, their student. Those of us who have been around education have seen the different educational uh, ideas that have come along, and they change. And it takes a while for everyone to get adjusted to it. But our, from what I hear and what I saw tonight, what I read, our professionals are picking up on it and they're saying, okay, we're going for it, we're doing it. And like they said, probably that was three weeks ago, they asked them all that stuff. And I'm sure by now, being the true professionals they are, that they're going to make it work in this, like I said, that first year, it's going to be an adjustment. But after that, it'll be just like all the other programs that have come along in the past. Eventually, everybody's going to get And then, of course, in education, what, 10 five to ten years, something change again, but this is the best that there is right now because it benefits kids. It's a struggle at first for kids. I, I see some of the homework and stuff that comes home and helping them do it and, you know, readjusting my think, way of thinking to fit with what they're being instructed with. Trying to get that out of some young kids, that's kind of hard because they they're still picking up on it, but it's it's a great thing, and we're moving forward and looking at this strategic plan. Yeah, it's just that one word. I just <laughs> we will take that word past. out. And I'll tell you um, what's very satisfying to me is when visitors come uh, on a Friday night, and um, we try to create an environment where our guests feel at home and they feel welcome. Yeah, we want to win, but we also want um, them to feel comfortable being here. And the comments, and I think Dr. White heard a bunch of them, when they see our band and they see our cheer and, and they see our facilities and they see how much fun we have um, on a Friday night, um, and then they start comparing what they see with us with what they see at, the, at their home and their schools, and, and it, it just makes you proud 
of our kids and what we've done. And, and I love winning, but I also really love when people think very highly of our school district. And hearing those things is very satisfying. Well, and how many kids we have participating in oh all God. those things. I mean, we outnumber. Oh, yeah. It's so satisfying. And yeah. the strategic plan will support that. Thank you. And now and the future. I like it. Anybody else have any comments, questions? It's a good roadmap. Yes. All right, we have a recommendation. It's almost just GPS, just about. <laughs> it, is, it is the administration's recommendation that the board approve the Telosa Midway ISD strategic plan as presented. I have a motion. I will make that motion. Thank you. Okay. Paul uh, and I will, I will second that. that. So Paul and I, we have a motion and a second that the board approve the TMISD strategic plan as presented. All those in favor? None opposed. Motion carries 6 0. We're taking that word. <laughs> this, this, this is a living, breathing document. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll yeah. We'll continuously. Uh, good point. Uh, tweak it and, and continuously under construction. 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 All right. The next agenda item is to discuss and consider approval of consent agenda informational items. Um, number one, the check payment register. Anybody have any questions? I do. Okay. Uh, Philip, on page nine, I just, I don't know. What's the little page on the, on the top? Nine. Nine. Oh, <laughs> it's running back to it. We're it's saving paper. Yes. That's a good idea. I saw what you were doing. <laughs> That's a idea. Yes. Okay. I, I don't understand what uh, Toloso Midway Bed Pack is yes. for that sixty nine thousand nurse enterprises. I can't tell you sixty nine thousand dollars. And the Gurney nursing sk uh, skills MA, whatever that's right above it, that's yes. twenty four thousand. It's a total of $100,000. I bet that's what the CTE. Well, I, I, I just see nursing there, so I'm yes, thinking that is, I'm that, thinking that's, that's, that's a jet, CTE that's the jet, thing. That's the jet grant for the, uh, the health science uh, jet grant. It's the, some of the equipment that we bought. So what's a bed pack? I think it's an actual, like, yeah. bed, it's like the, the bed, bed, like remote the patient, bed that they use in the yeah, hospitals. The in the bed and... It's like a hospital. It's you're you're like hospital, a hospital yeah. Yeah. Or it, can, yeah. it goes up yeah. down. Has so a we have those burn. here in ca on, on campus. Yes, there's. I do know there was. You know, we're you know we're also getting that equipment. It's like yeah. the jet grant was one point four million, yeah. and it was for two content areas: welding and health sciences. We got the. We received the largest. Jet grant of any district in the region. We you put that somewhere. Didn't yeah, you? I'm going to mm -hmm. show the check Thursday because yeah. they bought a table, and I want to thank them. Yeah, I remember seeing reading that mm -hmm. somewhere. Anybody have any other questions? Uh, I'm good. That one just caught my eye. Yeah. I do just have, I mean, this is, at the very beginning, you have some listed in February and April and July, and they're all negative. <clears throat> are these, like, refunds, or are these, uh... No, they're probably, hold on, one second, let me look. Is it on the first number, page, page number four, yeah. That's where that's from, that's all the books. Yeah, what that, what that was is... That's a that's the uh, connectivity fund grant that we got, and I think there was just, there was a misunderstanding about do, do we part, do we we do the PO and we're gonna either receive the receive the equipment and what it turned out was we didn't have to do the PO. It's like the grant is paying CDW for us. We don't have to write the check. 
we had put the PO and like we thought we were going to have to pay the check to pay for the, the the devices, and it turns out no, the the grant pays CDW directly. Okay. So we it, we just reversed the PO, <clears throat> and that's inconsistent so, with any federal grant that we yes. get. Yeah, normally we have to pay it and do it. It's not the norm. Go to the normally, pay pay normally it. we do it. We we get awarded the grant. We get the quotes. We get the bids. We place the order. Once we write the check, then we turn around and say, hey, we got the stuff, we paid for it, then reimburse us. Okay. Uh, this one turned out to be where no, we didn't have to do the PO. We were, were able to reverse. We're still going to have to record the entry. Even though we didn't physically get the money and we didn't physically write the check, we're still going to have revenue and expenditures. This was just reversing the PO. And, and just so I'll understand, because this is a perfect example, like... Uh, on page 35, like uh, all these checks on the bottom to Melanie and McLaren, and I, I understand that's for ACC, but I mean, like all these items are. Are they part of reimbursements? Well, I, I figure uh, they're reimbursements. I can tell you that the first one is a mileage reimbursement, and the rest are probably petty cash reimbursements. They can make small cash, they have a petty cash where they make small purchases. And she's the, as the principal, all the petty cash checks are written to the supervisor or the, the person in charge. So the rest of those are probably. Um, and let uh, me ask you this. So, I mean, we, we, we make the check payable to her for all this. And I don't have a problem with that. What I'm saying is, I mean, that's none of my business because that would be uh, on any of the teachers who get a check for reimbursements. But yes. doesn't that affect their, their income? No, if how, how do they you know, the, IRS, the IRS rules are if you like for mileage, if you ask yeah. if you ask for a deep when we ask for we don't re reimburse anybody mileage, they have to give us the detailed itinerary like they went from this point to this point yeah. and it, so the IRS rules are if you require that kind of detail, the reimbursement is not income. Versus like uh, for all the administrators and certain uh, people like uh, trainers and technicians. Who we, who we give the phone allowance to. You get the phone allowance, you get 50 bucks every month. We're not asking you to prove that you used your cell phone or someone called you after hours. And so that is taxable income because we're not asking for any detail. Yeah. So uh, a reimbursement, as long as it's detailed, as long as it's for a specific item, it's not taxable income. Okay. So there's no, there's no. Uh, so that works for all the. And that works for, for everybody. Okay. Number two, the tax collection report. Any questions on that? Comments? I will just point out that it, it looks out of whack because we got the big payment from the yeah, that, that number looks off. <laughs> it looks way different because we got that big lump payment in August. I was looking at that, but I figured that's what it was for. Yes, our collection is 114% at the bottom. That's, yeah. That doesn't happen normally. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Moving on to number three, enrollment report. Okay. Getting some of them back. Number four, minutes for regular and special call meeting. Do we have a recommendation? Yes, we do, Madam President, members of the board. It is, it is the administration's recommendation that the board approve the consent agenda item as presented. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Do I have a motion made by Ben and a second by Janie that the board approve the consent agenda items as presented. All those in favor? Um, Oppose. Motion carries 6 0. We do have a future uh, regular scheduled board meeting October 16th, 2023. And um, next weekend is San Antonio um, Conference. What? Hmm? This weekend, Dallas. Isn't it? Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. 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 I'm sorry. Dallas. That's why y'all are looking at me like that. Yeah. Dallas. Don't forget about Thursday. And Thursday. Yeah, but it's not, it's not the, it's the end of October. Yeah. It's yeah. like the it's 28th, the, 29th. the beginning of October. 
No. It goes all the way till October first. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a last week in September. September. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Monday's the twenty fifth. Okay. It is um, nine ten. Do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make that motion. Uh, uh, and do we have a second? Um, we have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor? None opposed ever. Motion carries 6 0. It is 9 10, and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Good meeting. So,